Hello, good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for joining us today. This is the latest in a the Trailblazer webinar series, and today we are going to be talking all things metaverse. Is the metaverse the Emperor's new clothes, or is it a bright future for hospitality? I'm Eloise Hansen. I'm your host for today's webinar and the editor of Boutique Hotel News. And we are an online B2B platform for the global boutique, lifestyle and luxury hotel industry. So one of the sponsors for today's session is Cvent, and they are a meetings and events technology provider. And we have a short video to play for you. Further information about the event has been popped into the chat if you would like to learn more. Now, to provide a very brief overview of how today's session is going to run, we're going to spend around 45 minutes talking with our speakers today, with some time set aside at the end to answer any questions from our audience. So, Shout out to our audience members right now. If you have a question at any point during the conversation, please pop these um, into the Q&A bar at the bottom of your screen and I will get round to asking these as and when. And as a gentle reminder, this session is being recorded and the webinar replay will be automatically emailed out to everyone within a few days. A second sponsor for today's session is Doove. They are a guest management platform. And once again, we have a short video to play for you. And again, further details about Doove have been popped into the chat for you to follow up with. Now, let's meet our speakers. We wouldn't have a conversation today if our four magnificent speakers were not here. And I'm going to move from left to right as per the PowerPoint slides to allow our speakers to introduce themselves. So Nicoletta, I'm kicking off with yourself, please. Hello, Eloise, and hello, everyone. And thank you so much for having me here on this platform. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, being surrounded by amazing hoteliers and, and travel experts. Um, I'm Nicoletta, I'm Italian, based in London, a third generation hotelier, love and passion for hotels since I was three years old. And uh, 27 years ago, I moved to London, working for luxury hotels in operation and sales and marketing. And I set up 10 years ago, so I set up my own marketing um, agency consultancy for uh, independent hotels after having worked for lovely, beautiful chains uh, around the world. Brilliant, thank you so much, Nicoletta. And Romain, I'm coming to you next, please. Uh, so Romain today will be um, standing in for Alex Block, also at the new face, but over to you, Romain. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, Louise, to having me. So my name is Romain. I'm a product growth of a web free agency called The New Face. We are based in Paris. Uh, so we are linked to another agency called Aldente, who is advising brands in the luxury field since uh, 15 years old now. And uh, to explain, the founder of Aldente is also one of the founder of our agency, The New Face. So at the new phase, we place ourselves at the intersection of creativity and technology 
And we advise and help brands to develop more gamify and immersive marketing experiences. And we help them to develop their ecosystem in the web free industry. Brilliant. Thank you, Romain. And Curtis, over to you next, please. Hi, good morning. <clears throat> Hi, good morning. My name is Curtis. I'm the founder of a company called Roomza. Prior to that, I was a hotel brand executive and developer. I've helped develop over a billion dollars in real estate. And I thought, well, why is the best part of a hotel always the lobby? And so then I was like, well, what if it just didn't have one? And so that's how we came up with Roomza. And Roomza is sort of the world's first hotel concept that's engineered specifically to compete directly with a concept like Airbnb. Another way that we're different is we were one of the first to really start the conversation around what the guest experience looks like in real life. So a way that we're really different, we do own a good bit of intellectual property and we've done some really cool innovations, but everything about uh, Roomza and the metaverse really ties back and augmented reality really ties back to in real life. And it's moving the needle for someone's life, right? It's making a positive impact, whether it be commercially or, you know, something that's uh, a bit harder to define. But thank you so much for having us. I'm looking forward to the conversation. Thank you, Curtis. And last but not least, Timothy. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Timothy Griffin. I'm a principal and co-founder of World Rock Hospitality. Um, we create dynamic hospitality hotel brands. Um, we operate hotels under hotel management agreements and we get hotels uh, opened under technical service uh, agreements. Um, prior to Wellbrook, I was with uh, the Hoxton, uh, one of Emma's Moore's brands for about 10 years, um, initially as brand director for the for the business, handling everything brand related. Uh, and latterly, I was based in New York. I set up the, the US uh, part of the business and uh, operated the New York office and opened the four uh, US hotels there. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Timothy. And all the LinkedIn profiles to our speakers today have been popped into the chat for you to all to connect with and carry on that conversation. So if this is the first time that you've um, subscribed or are tuning in to one of our webinars or particularly one of the, the boutique hotel news webinars, we always like to offer some context to our conversation. And some of these uh, screen grabs on your screen at the moment are quotes and facts, um, some of which have been taken from a McKinsey and Company report that was published in June this year. And just to read out some of the facts, in 2021, venture capital and private equity funding into the metaverse reached $13 billion. By 2030, the value of the metaverse could reach $5 trillion. And in 2022 already, investment into the metaverse space is more than double what it was in all of 2021. The other screen grabs on your screen are actually quotes taken from, oh, can we go back a slide, please? Thank you. These are quotes um, offering some kind of definition about what the metaverse is and what impact it will have. So at the top here, we've got John Hankey. He's the CEO of Niantic. And Niantic is the developer of the game Pokemon Go. And John said, I think about the metaverse as a continuation of where tech was headed prior to COVID. We have Instagram, we have email, we have messaging. And then there's our real life friends, the real life activity that we're participating in. Sometimes there's an intersection between these two. To read out what Paul Doherty said, who's the chief technology officer at Accenture, he said, while we are at the early days of the metaverse, it will advance very quickly. If companies don't act now, they'll find themselves operating in worlds designed by and for someone else. On to the next slide, please. Here we have headlines taken from some online articles and the top left hand story is a good example of how the metaverse is being used for commercial purposes. So we have Nike's store on Roblox has received over 21 million visitors and the brand's digital efforts, which now includes its metaverse experiences, 
represents 26% of its total brand revenue. The headline just underneath, in November last year, a plot of land on Decentraland sold for $2.4 million. However, since then, and until the beginning of October, just gone, the average prices for land in Decentraland and the sandbox have declined by roughly 80%. And I know this is um, as a result of or in sync with the, the price of cryptocurrency being devalued. And I know um, that certainly made headlines over the last week or so. So even though transactions are slowing down as a result of what's happening in the market, you could argue that there's opportunity to buy virtual land at a cheaper price. So let's talk about the metaverse. Let's talk about what opportunities it does present for hospitality. And Romain, I would like to kick off with yourself as you are working for a Web3 digital creative agency. So how would you describe the metaverse? Oh, Romain, you're on mute. Okay, sorry. There we, there we go. Um, uh, I was saying I like to stay very simple in the definition of a, a metaverse. To my mind, it's like a virtual world, virtual place where people simply can connect and exchange with other people. And um, it's also a place where brands can develop their culture and uh, identity through different kinds of experiences. And I guess we are just at the beginning of what uh, brands will uh, will build in this uh, new kind of a virtual world, like it's a test and learn phase, I guess. Mm. I read somewhere that 2023 will be quite a defining year for the metaverse and that thus far we've been trying to figure out what it means and how it's going to be used. But now that we've reached some some level of understanding, next year will be real sort of case by case use of how it can be used and will actually set the direction I suppose of how and where the metaverse will evolve to so remain sticking with you for a second here yeah how it how is the metaverse creating those new sources of value for brands and organizations so I think that, um, like I said, it's a wider area to express, uh, express sorry, the core of the brand. So to give you an example, like right now in a classical website, uh, brands cannot express themselves. Like if you compare uh, a luxury brand like Louis Vuitton and a more classical brand like, um, I don't know, um, Adidas or uh, no, no offense to Adidas, <laughs> uh, but the, um, the, two, the two brands express themselves like the, the user experience is the same on the both. They cannot express themselves. And what I think brands are seeing in this new, new area and new virtual world, like there are, they have more tools and more, and, uh, yeah, more tools to, to develop their brand image and uh, to create really uh, strong experiences to, to um, Sorry to attract new customer, new uh, yeah, new customer and new new clients. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah. please carry on. And um, also, I think so. Web three is about um, create uh, commitments and and uh, creating new communities. And um, if you succeed to create a strong community around a project, like people will become your ambassador ambassador of the brand and you will um, they will speak about your brand you won't have to 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 pay for that uh, kind of service and also you are also building a direct channel of conversion with your community you are no longer dependent of like uh, facebook instagram you can you can now communicate strongly with your the community you you develop mm -hmm. i don't know if and i was clear no no absolutely and i know making that specific to the hospitality industry, I'm going to be uh, picking Nicoletta's brains a little later on today about other use cases of the metaverse within that hospitality landscape. But 
I'd like to bring Timothy into the conversation here as uh, someone who is actually launching a hotel in the metaverse. So, Timothy, are you able to give us an update or, or able to share your progress thus far on launching Levin in the metaverse? Sure, with, with pleasure. Uh, so Levin, for those of you who may not be familiar, is uh, a brand created by myself and uh, some other uh, co-founders, uh, part of the, the World Book group of brands. And we opened our first uh, real life hotel in Manchester, uh, in the UK, a year ago on Saturday. So we're one year old and we're looking actively for additional um, sites for, for Levin throughout the UK, uh, Europe and, and the US. And um, upon our journey looking around, you know, we we thought, you know, wh why not open our second hotel in, in the metaverse? So we did some investigating and we found a plot that we liked in Decentraland um, on the Fashion Avenue. Um, and we acquired the, the plot about six months ago. And we've been working with a, a real life architect to build the uh, to build the building. And unlike other brands who are um, you know creating spaces in the metaverse, we wanted to work with a real architect. Uh, really is a way to help us connect the real um, Levin experience with, uh, with, with the virtual experience. So it also allowed us to give, uh, you know, to add a real, you know, level of, of materiality and, and reality to, to the experience, um, you know, in the virtual world by working with a, a real architect. So we were spending quite some time on um, understanding what the experience should be like and also working within the confines of, um, of, of the metaverse. And it's rather like the real, real world and that there are air rights. So, you know, we're limited to being three stories high, for example, and using the space that we have available within our, our plot. Um, and we've uh, created a, what we believe is a, is a very um, you know, dynamic, exciting representation of what a hotel could be like in the metaverse. Um, and we've issued some uh, quite exciting images. Um, however, those of you who have been in the metaverse know that it's a little more analog than some of the, uh, the publicity may, may share. So you know, we've been very careful in ensuring that the experience that's available within the metaverse um, is one that's you know, very engaging for, for those uh, you know, gamers or users who may be exploring the space. And we've seen it as an opportunity to supercharge the hotel experience. So instead of having an elevator, for example, we've got like a blimp that takes you up uh, between floors and you know, our avatar is 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 one of our 11 hosts at the at the front door and you know we found ways to be able to correct the you know connect the the real world experience of Levin with uh with the virtual space as well um and we saw it as a great you know a great um opportunity not only to um you know reference remains uh, comments around um you know, as, as a way to extend the brand and, and create advocates for, for the brand but also as a, as a v commerce opportunity of course to be able to um you know provide a, an opportunity to uh, acquire Levin uh, merchandise um, as a way to connect people and communities and to create a you know digital amenity space for, for our customers um in the virtual world um and as a really cool way to connect the you know the irl space with the away from the real world space as well so we just saw it as a really you know exciting opportunity to um to uh, you know bring our brand to a, a wider audience mm -hmm. i hope it wasn't you who spent the 2.4 million dollars on that plot <laughs> of land and essentially no, we, we, we got a, a bit more of a bargain than, than that certainly <laughs> So, Timothy, what have you learned during the process? What key takeaways could you possibly pass on to our audience who might be thinking about rolling out a strategy like yourself? I, I think giving a lot of thought to how does your virtual experience uh, reflect the, the real experience of your brand. And I think it's a really exciting you know, space and opportunity for hospitality brands because it is really encouraging us to be super creative around creating those connections between the world, real world and, and the virtual world. And I think you know, arguably for retail brands and you know, Nike, Adidas, um, Louis Vuitton uh, you know, have been referenced and you know, uh, Sotheby's, for example, have done a, a great job of, of creating a, you know, a, um, a very lucrative retail experience in, in the virtual world but it's a bit more challenging when you think about it for for hotels as you know some of the you know core pillars of a hotel experience is you know a great bed for the night you know lovely food lovely drink um, so beyond that how can we create a you know an experience that's meaningful for people within the metaverse so we put a you know spent a lot of time thinking through that and I think those were the, some of the you know biggest lessons for us um, and aside from that really the physicality of the space as well is that you know how do we create something that is you know very inspiring and otherworldly uh, but also it reflects the values of our brand as well that was you know very important for us thanks timothy and to bring curtis into the conversation here you i've been on the rooms of the website and i've seen I've, I've actually experienced some of the technology i suppose that that rooms is deploying 
Um, we, are you able to share with our audience um, about how Rumsda is using um, augmented reality capabilities? Sure. And just so that everybody knows, you know, augmented reality is a little bit different than what we might think of when we think of the metaverse, right? And I think that it's probably, you know, going to be the more commercialized future. When we think about technology, it's easy to think about things like once they're complete, but streaming a song is a good example. If you think about what it took to stream a piece of music in 2001, people were like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Why don't you just listen to the radio? But we weren't ever trying to listen to the radio, right? We were trying to do something completely novel. And I think that the metaverse is the same way. It can be really hard to understand in that way because we're really trying to future cast, right? To Timothy's point, the, the experience today is really in its infancy. So just to go back in time a little bit, whenever I talk about the metaverse and what it is and, and how to, to get people to understand and get on board, I just say that it's the tactile internet. It's the internet that you can touch and feel and experience and be a part of, and it engages all of your human senses versus looking at it like a page on a screen, right? And so how Rumza uses augmented reality is pretty cool because it allows the guests to be tactilely engaged. I don't know if that's a word or not, but let's pretend like it is, to be engaged in a, in a real kind of uh, immersive way. What that might look like is we use a, something called Novo for our amenities. And what that is, is it's used of, it's made of algae. It's kind of like a Tide Pod, but futurized. And we put our amenities inside this Novo droplet and it disintegrates in the shower and there's nothing left, right? That's a little, that's new, right? There's a learning curve for something like that, certainly. So using augmented reality, you could have on your Apple AR glasses, you could go to the Roomza website and you could actually hold one of those Nobo droplets in your hand, look at it 360 and even use it to really familiarize yourself with what that looks like before you get there. There are some other really interesting ways that we add value to travelers' lives, right? One of those ways is being able to spatially be aware of the space that you're renting. So if you go to roomsa.com, you're standing inside a physical representation of an actual room. You can talk to a host about that actual room. You can buy that actual room. And then you can whip out our metaversal version of a, of a, a measuring stick. And you can judge for yourself how far is the chair from the dresser? How far are the beds apart? I used to travel with my disabled grandmother. And that kind of information would have been really helpful to me. Mm -hmm. So perhaps on that note, um, I've seen quite a few online debates or podcast episodes particularly geared around accessible hotels how 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 can we improve and do better so perhaps building off what you've just said Curtis how can hospitality brands start to innovate using this kinds of technology well, and just I I also think, and and I'm of a different view when when it comes to much much of this. But my view is, I think that this is the lowest hanging fruit for hotel brands, right? When we when we embrace some of this, uh, before I go off on this tangent, I want to pause really quick, and I do want to say that there is a market for creating hotels in the metaverse, right? Take Timothy again, for example, and what he's doing with his brand Levin. By having a fully fleshed out, very intuitive, very thoughtful expression of his brand in the metaverse, suddenly billions of people who will never have the economic ability to travel more than a dozen miles or so away from where they were born may in the future have the opportunity to travel and to visit and to experience a hotel like that, that they may never get the opportunity to do so ever again in their lives. That I think is huge just for the human experiment, right? I think that that's really, really impactful. But I think that in order for us to have mass adoption, we sort of have to move on from embracing the metaverse just as marketing, and we have to find ways to make it add value to people's lives, right? So one of the IPs that we develop and own is being able to book a cruise ship cabin in the metaverse, right, or in augmented reality, where you might be able to go back for a whole year, right? Your family is able to acquaint themselves with your cabin. You're able to add personalizations. You're able to, again, make sure that grandma can get up and down the stairs, that they're wide enough, that they're not too steep. These are some really these, these are some really easy things that people can even do using something, a tool like Canvas, using the LiDAR in your phone, 
to start to build some of these tools yourselves that build trust and rapport with your guests versus it just being a one-sided marketing thing, right? Because whenever we just make it about marketing, we're really betraying the fact that it is the tactile internet. When it's just about marketing, it's very much a one-sided transaction and the guest isn't really getting to do anything, right? I think it's important that we give them some responsibility, give them some play. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Curtis. Nicoletta. You're also exploring the metaverse and its use cases, but albeit perhaps slightly different from what we've heard thus far. So are you able to highlight how else the metaverse uh, can be used and maximized uh, in the wider travel market? Sure. Thank you, Louise. First of all, I, I love all the what was said earlier, and I, I totally embrace what, what everybody's doing because I believe it's it's here and we we are, you know, we've got to move on and, and embrace this amazing opportunity that we had. Um, I just have a little a little example of what we used to use some time ago, <laughs> uh, you know, and uh, thinking about Google Map, we would have not, you know, believed that that would be the case. And now, obviously, I, I do some presentation with this with some other people who obviously have the same. So um, I believe it's, it's, it's here and uh, it's, it's so exciting that uh, we have this opportunity to actually uh, explore uh, our hotels, our travel, which is my, my, my sector in, in this way. So hotels can um, maximize their presence, their twinning themselves, obviously, twinning the, the presence um, uh, into the metaverse like before that used the, there wasn't any existence of internet uh, everybody had uh, uh, just an address and maybe a fax a fax number and you can you can understand my age but i also have <laughs> my my kids are teenagers my daughter is is designing a, a hotel on roblox so i understand this is this is G, G, gen z and obviously even gen alpha which is going to be all using that let alone that uh, we are a non-screen family Monday to Friday. So we are also believe in a relationship, a real relationship, a one-to-one -one personal uh, you know, life. So going back to travel, I do believe that we will still have the joy travel in person to enjoy the real existing hotels. But for me, working with the trade, for example, it, it, and going through the pandemic, I believe that having presentations that can be totally immersive, presentation can be augmented reality and that can actually show you where you are and what the hotel can, can offer. But also, for example, moving from high spender um, clients who want to organize events, they could actually see uh, beforehand, before the selection process, the various venues and then decide what to do. And also we can talk, you know, for, for, for long here, we could talk about responsible travel, sustainable travel, which is very dear to me, and uh, visit those um, uh, areas which are overcrowded and probably not imp imp impossible to visit. I believe there was the, an, the island in the, um, in the Pacific during COP27 that decided to be uh, have a presence in metaverse because it will be uh, it will not exist in very in 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 a, few, in a decade because of the submerging water, and then the the not the last but it probably the, the most important and going back to Curtis is the um, the disabled people or people who are not physically able to travel. So why not giving them the opportunity to travel? And explore a uh, destination that's that that won't be uh, able to you know to visit. One last uh, um, example is we were in Paris a couple of weekends away, and uh, just for a couple of nights, and we couldn't go to the Louvre because it was so the, the queue was so long, and every time, you know, if if you have only a couple of days in the destination, you don't want to waste a four four hours queuing when you know that you 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 can go back again. So I. I, I loved visiting the Louvre Museum, sitting down on my, uh, in my sitting room and using the metaverse. I was already uh, still uh, breathing the you know, Parisian uh, atmosphere, and then I had the opportunity to do that. So, uh, and, and you know, I could go on, but there are so many opportunities there. Building off that and also leveraging I suppose your marketing um, expertise and, and knowledge here. 
what does this mean um, for brands in terms of driving loyalty? I think it was um, Romain who, who talked about attracting new customers and, and building that, that community. How do you see the metaverse impacting or help helping to steer uh, loyalty? Hotels have long had huge loyalty programs or rewards programs, which at least over the last three years have been constantly revamped as behaviours and, and tastes now change. What are your thoughts on this, Nicoletta? It is a massive opportunity. And as Roman was saying, there is a new, uh, a totally new audience that can be tapping and uh, of people who are like me. Uh, I mean, I love technology. So, you know, going back and, and adopting that, but also people who never known the the past so the young generations and uh, with the nft and all the uh, mm. opportunities the dynamic nft is going on uh, with seasonality everything can be applied and, and can utilize so there is so much creativity that a hotel can utilize from uh, the gifting the loyalty card the loyalty programs to buying products uh, within in the, in the building can be uh, furniture or just an experience for example you know i remember when i was working at the dorchester i had uh, i served a lot of breakfast to pavarotti and there were a lot of people a lot of fans there who wanted to have a, an autograph and that obviously had to be that will be something that has to be regulated and, and and contracted before but hotels can make so many partnerships and can really really be creative and, and drive a lot on that and Thanks. if i could just yeah Please. i just wanted to Piggyback on what uh, Nicoletta was saying. I think familiarity, right, is the key to brand relationships. Rep my Latin teacher used to say repetition is the key to learning. We were doing declinations, but it's sort of the same thing, right? And I, th I think that it's really important. You can't discount how important it is to be able to be in someone's home, to be in their life constantly. And hotel brands, we try to do that by selling you our soap and branded swag and hoping that you'll care enough about those points and the credit card that you use every day has, you know, maybe our logo on it. But what if in the future we live in this AR VR world where we have a homepage and what if your homepage can be your favorite hotel brand? So whenever I go travel somewhere, there's not a thought of staying somewhere else. I want to go to the place where I go every day. And that's really the opportunity that unlocks a new obsessive kind of loyalty that's never been known to hospitality brands. That's only been, that's usually been, you know, gate kept to things like Coca-Cola. Imagine if there's a, a brand that can have the same worldwide affinity, love, trust that Coca-Cola has, and then apply that to the trillion dollar hospitality industry. Mm -hmm. Romain, I'm coming to you next, please, because we've we've talked about various different aspects here, loyalty, retailing, e-commerce, actually developing in the metaverse. But I want to take a step back. What makes a successful Web3 strategy? What are those key pillars that you need to think about before even getting to this point of actually immersing yourself in the metaverse? Uh, so to start with, I think the the hero the hero in the in a web three strategy is like you can't jump into the web three just for jumping into the web three. No, you you can arrive and just draw up a collection of NFTD. I think to my mind, a great strategy is to have a deep reflection on what web three can brought to your field. And now we are seeing like real company working on on this. Uh, this clue, like uh, Nicoletta, Timothy, and Curtis, uh, people are now starting to build real products uh, that can be applied to a field and have a, um, a real, real use case and a, a real vision. And once you got that product, I think you can smartly create, like I said, your target or build your community to really enforce people and um, to federate people to, to, to go into your product. Mm -hmm. What would you say are the risks and rewards of an actually investing in the metaverse? Or perhaps another way to rephrase that question is how do you weigh up whether to go for it or not? Um, I will a bit, sorry, repeat myself. I think like if a company that have a, a strong brand uh, is not really 
uh, don't have really a reflection on, on what it can uh, brought to, to its utility and just like jump to, to a web free product, it may be degrade your brand image. And like people, it's a, are, are smart and in web free and, and see when you are just here to, to propose a cash grab experiences and uh, just uh, release NFT for releasing NFT. So um, I, um, sorry, what, what, what was the, the rest of the question? Um, that was effectively it. How do you weigh up the risks and rewards of, of investing yeah. in the metaverse? Mm, I guess there are also um, technical issue and question to ask yourself when you want to develop a product uh, within the web free like which um, virtual world I'm gonna build my experiences. Mm -hmm. Like you say in your presentation, no, there has been a huge traction on some of the virtual world, like the central land, et cetera. And maybe some brands have invest too much in those kind of solution and cannot have regret about it. I think the projects were, must have really a deep reflection and uh, to, to find the best solution that applies to your company, like in the choice of uh, your metaverse, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to hope or assume that Romain, you, you might be the best person to ask this question. Um, but say, um, for example, you are wanting to um, build, develop, design a product in the metaverse. At the moment, is there um, good enough legal coverage to make sure that your product is not replicated or duplicated by somebody else? Is there such thing as, do, can you copyright, for example, or trademark your product if you're building in the metaverse? Um, like the risk to be copied in, your, in, in the experience you develop? Is that your question? Let's say you go on, go by product rather than the experience, go by product. So let's say, for example, Timothy, you're building a hotel um, and you've asked for an interior designer to come and build this hotel for you. Is there the right legal framework exists in the metaverse to prevent somebody from taking that design and replicating it somebody, somewhere else? Mm, I think if you have the first move and you develop a strong product, it could be copy. I guess nobody can stop a hacker or somebody mm. to take your ID and replace it. But um, I don't know if there are legal action for this, like if a hotel is duplicate in a other virtual world i uh, don't have the the strong answer for this but i think like people won't acknowledge that your first idea has been copied copy sorry so mm -hmm. i don't think it's a problem okay well how about leave that one with me i've clearly got an investigation on my hands and i will come back with an answer yeah. for you guys at some point Timothy, let's move on to you. Um, I know I've just used your hotel as an example here, but we've talked about connecting the virtual reality with the physical one. Um, how else are you look? How are, how are you looking to bridge those two worlds together? You highlighted the e-commerce um, capability and, and being able to sell your brand merchandise in the metaverse, but your key learnings earlier was really trying to think about how to make sure that your on-site experience is, is mirrored to some degree in the virtual world and vice versa. So can you talk us through your thought processes in that? Yeah, sure, sure absolutely. And Curtis uh, yeah, touched on it uh, briefly uh, around ensuring that the experience in the metaverse for brands is, is an enriching one. And you know, that's been very uh, key for us. And, you know, as, as well as being an opportunity to, um, you know, to provide an opportunity for more people to experience our brand, we, we truly wanted 
um, the experience to be an enriching one for people who, who do visit Levin in, in the metaverse and uh, you know, as well as visiting uh, Levin in, in the real world, you know, one of those reasons it is connections and attending one of our events, for example, and we have a, a series of events um, planned in the metaverse that is, you know, it's focused on well-being and, um, and hotel related, um, you know, conversations perhaps, you know, around sleep hygiene or sleep quality, um, you know, general uh, well, well-being topics. So, yeah, how can we provide visits to the, how can we ensure that visits to the Levenverse are, um, are enriching and uh, meaningful for people and, and um, you know, provide a, a new layer of experience. So that whole experience of social connection piece um, allows us to be able to connect the real world uh, experience with the virtual one. And we will have events that are happening simultaneously in the Levin Manchester, as well as in the, the Levenverse um, at the same time. Yeah, another way that we've done it as well is is through is through art and we partner with Lily Burney um, on some of the artwork in the public spaces in, in the Levin Manchester and uh, she's creating NFTs for us for the um, for the, the Levin verse also so there is the opportunity again to have that crossover between the real world and, and the uh, the virtual world um, and part of our one of our brand uh, moments as well when guests stay at a Levin hotel is that every guest has a free pair of Levin socks uh, on their bed that they're free to take home um, so uh, our avatars will uh, be giving out free um, um, free wearables, free Levin socks in the metaverse, so you can you can rock up in in Levin socks uh, in the virtual world as well. So again, just another you know opportunity to connect the real world experience with um, with with the virtual one, mm -hmm. and all, all a bit of fun as well. Timothy, as as somebody who has um, a lot of experience leading and working with brands within the hospitality space. Um, what do you think is going to set apart those those leaders that are really championing the metaverse and doing it fantastic to those that are we'll say half-heartedly maybe giving it a good stab um i know there's been a a, a trend at the moment that uh travelers at the moment are incredibly discerning and will be able to tell whether a brand is being genuine or authentic so from your own point of view here what do you think is going to distinguish those that are really doing a great job to those that are perhaps just jumping on the bandwagon yeah absolutely I, I think that's a great question and it's really around credibility of the experience I think because it is quite easy to have a you know a shop window uh, within the metaverse that again is just reflective of, of a, you know a business's brand and I think consumers you know travelers gamers will very quickly be able to identify that it really is a brand play um, but I think that um, those who are you know truly engaged in the experience will be finding creative ways to connect their real world brand with with the virtual world and, and to make it a, an experience that brings value to um you know to, to people who are visiting the site so i think very quickly people will be able to identify if there is you know true depth to to uh, to, to the presence within the metaverse um, and that again it's not just a you know a, a grab for um you know for v commerce uh, opportunities as well so you know there's, there's got to be a reason to you know to to visit the site um, and there's got to be a reason to stay there as well and to engage with it so i think brands that are you know very thoughtful about that whole experience will be able to articulate that in a way that's meaningful for people mm -hmm. so building off what timothy has just said there curtis do you think technology can build trust does technology have the power to really help drive that loyalty convert those customers perhaps from that virtual experience into the physical one sure it can right but i think the plot is ours to lose at this point uh like we did with photography i think the photography think about booking a hotel before photography, you really just had to rely on what somebody printed and wrote and writing can be very flowery. So I'm sure there was zero trust and credibility there. And then there was this new medium of photography and everyone's like, oh, wow, we're going to trust hotels so much. And then we figure out the wide angle lens and that all goes out the window, right? So I really think that we can build trust. We can build a real relationship based on, you know, honest brokership, but I'm not sure that we're doing that right now, right? And so I think that what that looks like is, you know, to uh, Timothy's point again, working with architects and people who understand the real world operation of your building. And there can be some fantastic parts of it, like the blimp versus the elevator. But if your hotels are two stars in the real world and five stars in the metaverse, then you're not doing yourself any favors, right? So I, I think that it's it's up to us 
just like any other medium that we use to decide how we want to win this business. But I will say that in the future, authenticity is gonna be far more important to consumers than ever before. And it's just not something you can phone in. Rooms that has over 22,000 people on the wait list and we've spent $0 on marketing. And it's only because we say things that resonate with people that are authentic, that really awaken something in them that that's more than just, oh, I need to go to Detroit or, oh, I need to go to Marseille, right? Like it becomes a really, really interesting part of their life. Something they're excited about makes their heart beat fast, but it's up to us how we use this and every other medium. Mm -hmm. So what potential do you think the metaverse has then in, in becoming that, I won't say just a force for good, but that legitimate, genuine, we all believe in it, force for good? For example, there was a question that was asked earlier that, that Meta had recently laid off 11,000 employees. So is optimi optimism in this a bit it's premature. important to be realistic about what we're doing here, right? And first to know that there has to be a way to commercialize all of this. Otherwise, it's never going to go anywhere because we all get up and go to work for money. And that's true at every scale of the economy. So, you know, and I think that what's happening right now in crypto is really sort of pulling the hood back on effect of altruism, right? I don't trust people who tell me they don't like money or they're not motivated by money or that they're not interested in that kind of a thing. So I think that when we're talking about what the future of this looks like, it's important to know your surroundings. Be aware that you're talking about something that's not regulated, that's brand new. For those of us who are old enough to remember, imagine that somebody was trying to sell you something on the internet in 1997, and you should approach the metaverse and Web3 with the same level of incredulity that you would that, right? You should do your investigations, do your diligence, make sure that you're doing something that actually is going to be impactful for you and your consumers. And it is kind of what we make of it from this point. I don't think it's going to be this grand life-changing thing. I do think that there are going to be some really important things that we take away from it, like being able to broaden the definition of us, narrow the definition of them, have more people exposed to travel. Again, imagine that I live in Eastern Europe. I'm never going to have the chance to go to New York City. I can walk around the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I can touch the walls. I can see these things, I can be immersed in it. That's really valuable. It's really important. Um, but it's just like the internet, right? The internet can be this unbelievable force for good when we make it so, but it can also be this unbelievable force for malevolence in our world when we allow it to be. The metaverse is nothing more than the internet growing up. It's the new, it's the new expression of the identity of the internet, right? It's web one, Web two, web three is still very sort of like cloudy and out there, but what web three is and how it's different from web two is that now you are putting something into it. Think about it like a video game, right? Why I say it's so important for us to have tactile experiences is because the consumers that we're targeting, your 15 year old children today, they're used to doing something in that world, right? They're not just observing it. We we tend to think of the metaverse as like looking at Christmas lights, like let's all get in the car and drive by these Christmas lights. That's not going to cut it. Right. And that you're just throwing your you're throwing the baby out with the bathwater if you're spending a lot of money on passive experiences. Find a way to make them more like video games. And I think that you'll unlock the the secret mm -hmm. to making a billion dollars in the future. Mm -hmm. I think also it's important to reflect that the metaverse is uh, it's a reflection of, of the real world also. So you know, in terms of it being a force for good, um, it truly reflects what's happening in, in our, you know, in our reality now in, in the real world. And, you know, the, the metaverse, for example, I think is a, is a great example of, of what the metaverse or, and of course there are multiple metaverses, but talking about it as one thing, but, you know, what the metaverse could be and the metaverse, of course, is, a, you know, very much focused on charity and altruism. Um, so there, there is that opportunity there, but as we have it today, the metaverse Metaverse is a reflection of, of, of our own of our own reality currently. Nicoletta, you highlighted the um, sustainability topic or, or theme earlier. What are your thoughts on on the metaverse becoming that that real kind of leader of, of champion something that's that's genuinely good? Well. Uh, a, lot, a lot of travel agents may not be happy with what I'm trying to say, but uh, obviously business travel has changed over the last three years. And, um, uh, you know, it, it wasn't the metaverse who obviously uh, created this, this crisis. But I think companies have started to understand that they can actually spend money in a different way 
and also for the event uh, industry. So maybe we could we could optimize this that kind of way of of, of traveling in you know uh, creating a hybrid uh, events uh, where people uh, you know some will attend directly, some mm -hmm. others will be behind, and will also maybe pay even less in participating, so that you know that it can be a bit more democratic kind of way of traveling. Um, and also uh, for um, overcrowded and uh, places where you know it's it's better better to avoid mass mass tourism. I believe that uh, you know it would be very important to have these destinations ready to be explored on on the metaverse rather than uh, being open to uh, to mass mass travel. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Thanks. And I wanted, also, I wanted to say something also about the uh, the, the, the subject uh, before. I believe that customer service will have to be absolutely crucial and still existing uh, because uh, at the end of the day, it's an H2H -H, um, uh, business, a human to human, even if obviously it's it's on uh, on uh, you know an, a 3D internet, so to speak. Um, it would be really, really crucial for companies, big uh, corporation or independent clients, which tend to be more my, my clients, to have uh, a, a valid customer service behind um, all, all of these um, operations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to totally agreed. Timothy, I'm going to uh, close today's conversation um, with a question to yourself. Um, this is one that's come through from the audience. Um, did you have a, what was your criteria for selecting which um, virtual land or, or platform to, to enter? Why was it Decentraland and not the Sandbox? What kind of things did you, were you looking for when you made that decision? Sure, it's a great question, and um, we, uh, you know, researching it, we found that Decentraland had um, more uh, creative opportunity around design than, for example, Sandbox, and there are merits and demerits to each of the uh, metaverses, but from a design perspective, we found that we had more opportunity within Decentraland, um, and then finding the location as well was was really, a, you know, and again, it's it's interesting, but it's a reflective of the real world. You know, we wanted to be in the right neighborhood, um, and you know, with with um, you know with with peers that reflected our brand as well. So hence, choosing the fashion district and fashion avenue in which to um, choose our plot. So you know, those were the the uh, the drivers behind the the decisions there. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Timothy. And uh, James Graves, I have seen your question come through, and I am actually personally going to get back to you on that question myself, because I think it's a brilliant question, but one that I think needs a bit of a deeper dive around what does it mean for hospitality um, and online spaces to serve potentially anonymous users or those users which have multiple identities so hold that thought for a later date and I will get back to you on that one James but otherwise um, we have fast approached three o'clock or our allotted hour so I'm just going to run you guys through um, some closing slides before we crack on with our day and I thought after the end of this conversation I would ask our attendees a poll and I would like to hear from everybody here that's on this webinar, whether the metaverse or whether you think that the metaverse will be a bright light for the future of hospitality. So if my colleagues could please launch that poll and we will, um, you will have some time to answer and I'm going to get around to um, sharing those results right at the end of our webinar. So please cast your votes now and I will get back to you very shortly. Whilst you're all voting, let's move through these um, closing slides. So I would just like to highlight the next webinar in this series is one week today. It's on Monday, November the 28th, and it's called Maximizing Your Assets Value. We would love to see you there. So please register using the link that has been popped into the chat. And in mid to late January, early next year, Boutique Hotel News and um, Service Department News and Short Term Rentals and Urban Living News, which are the four media brands in our portfolio, will be hosting Recharge 
published by and hosted by International Hospitality Media. This is an annual event that we um, relocate to a different European city every year. And this time we're going to be in Lisbon. So you can see some of our sponsors up on your screen there. And if you would like to hear further information about Recharge, then please click the link in the chat um, as it would be fantastic to see you all there in real life, in person. And if you would like to hear um, any additional details about Recharge or any of our webinars, then please get in touch with my colleague, Katie. Her details will be popping up on your screen now, as it will be great to hear from you. And also her um, email address has been popped into the chat there. So let's look at these poll results. Do you think that the metaverse will be a bright light for the future of hospitality? 55% yes, 15% no, and 30% don't know. So it looks like we've still got a job to do in trying to convince our audience. But once again, thank you so much for tuning in today. Thank you to Romain, Nicoletta, Timothy and Curtis for your insights. Thank you to Stephen and Do for sponsoring. And I will see you here this time, same place next week. And we're going to leave this webinar open for an extra two minutes just to allow our audience members to follow up on all the links that we have popped into the chat there. But thank you and do take care of yourselves.